This talk um, is on the anatomical ACL reconstruction web bar uh, on the MADI and the title is Does No Difference Mean There's No Difference? I'm Dr. Freddy Fu uh, from Pittsburgh. I, I Freddy Fu have re received um, you know, research support uh, from Smith and Nephew and my department have received support from various um, you know, industrial companies. The ACL uh, anatomical uh, is two bundles, the anterior medial bundle and the posterior lateral bundle. Uh, the a AM and PL work synesthetically together to make the insertion site of this um, AM and PL bundle has been studied uh, in Pittsburgh and recently published in JBJS in the June 2010 issue. As you can see here, the AM and PL have specific location as seen on the 3D CAT scan on the tibial uh, side. This can also be seen on the femoral side and 90 degree of flexion you can see the exact location on the intermedial and the posterior bundle and on the right side you can see a three dimensional CAT scan reconstruction uh, with a clear visualization of the uh, resonance ridge as well as the location of the AM PL bundle and the lateral bifurcate ridge. I think the most important concept is that we have to eliminate non-anatomical ACL reconstruction as a potential risk factor for osteoarthritis. Uh, Carola Van Nick and our institution have reviewed over 4,000 papers in a 10 years period and of that only 88 papers mentioned the word anatomical and only 61 described in some detail how the surgery was done. So in other words, we have been able to publish papers in ACL reconstruction with much interesting detail uh, technique of ACL reconstruction. And many of this um, technique we perform could potentially be non-anatomical. Again, the location on the, on the femoral and tibial tunnels in uh, anatomical double bundle reconstruction is uh, analyzed by three-dimensional computer tomography models uh, in Pittsburgh and was just published. As you can see with the grid, you can see the exact location on the AM and PL um, in the cadaver models. We also have a second uh, part paper uh, looking at uh, 30 asymptomatic subjects uh, that have a transtibial ACL reconstruction that was done uh, and as you can see on the left on the 3D uh, CAT scan reconstruction the femoral tunnel is definitely not in the correct position but all these people uh, seem to be functionally um, asymptomatic so in other words we strongly feel that uh, if you perform ACL reconstruction uh, with this transtibial technique with a with a tunnel dependent on each other uh, there's a high chance that this uh, tunnel may not be in the correct anatomical position. Now this um, classic article on the left by um, Dr. Marshall published in 75 to show that at zero degree the AM and PL are parallel and at 9 degree the AM is still um, you know tense but
This is um, a, a patient done in uh, 1989 with a 20 years follow-up. It played 11 professional, 11 years of professional uh, NFL uh, football. The knee is still stable. Now, why do we place this? Because we use uh, the isometric position, which is quite anatomical. We use old clock position, which uh, is quite anatomical. In all those, I would say, um, not very good habit we have uh, predispose us um, to place a cell in the uh, anatomical position. Uh, also, we tend to do the A cell faster and faster and quite dependent on, uh, you know, uh, drill guys. Uh, and efficiency and paying much less attention to anatomy, insertion site, resonance rich and other factors and also do not pay attention to the flexion angle when we drill uh, the tunnels. So all these factors uh, result in non-anatomical uh, ACL placement. Another paper just came out in March of 2010 is a paper um, uh, from uh, Australia. It's a very well done and as you can look at this x-ray, um, on the left side, the x-ray measure 14 degrees on the AP plane, which signified uh, quite an anatomical position. So in other words, um, we were able to publish uh, many papers without addressing exactly where we place our A-cell. And uh, this is something that we must eliminate in the future uh, when we start to discuss you know, all these results, or else we are not comparing uh, you know, the um, correct, um, you know, and the sample. And so, in other words, this paper is a well done evidence based medicine, you know, you know, in terms of the technique and the design. However, the technique um, the surgeons have used is not quite anatomical. So, the question is evidence based medicine really evidence based? I think this is something that we have to think philosophically. Now, interestingly, if you look at um, our colleagues in cardiology, uh, they invented EKG over 100 years ago, and this is a, an objective way uh, to measure how our heart functions. Also, the um, cardiologists as well as uh, cardiac surgeon all agree where the uh, blood vessels to support the heart, uh, how many chambers, the heart has has four chambers with four valves, and you can see all the structure beautifully uh, on the uh, 60 slide CAT scan. Now, uh, I, I, I want to give our colleagues in orthopedic surgery a message that we must model ourselves like the cardiologist. We must have an objective measurement uh, of the knee as well as agree on the anatomy. For example, ACL is a um, two bundle structure and we must, you know, understand this principle and utilize We also use something called a KT-1000 or 2000 to evaluate uh, success or failure of a circumstruction. Unfortunately, this kind of technique only measure two. These five studies are well done study by very well known authors. Uh, they look at and compare, you know, single double bundle reconstruction, allograph versus autograph, graph type technique, 
hamstring facet patella tendon, and none of this arthro were able to find any difference in outcome in the literature. Uh, why is that? Now let's look at a very famous journal, the New England Journal of Medicine. It just published a paper July 2010, a study from Sweden, level 1 study. High level of evidence, 121 patients. They say a circumstruction versus rehab. There's no difference between the groups. The problem with this kind of study is they have very minimal objective outcome measurements. Also, if you look at this paper closely, uh, we find the group uh, there's difference. There are more meniscus injury in the rehabilitation group, 13 to 1. Uh, there, are, there are you know more. Uh, not normal Lachman. The knees is looser in the rehabilitation group, 75% versus 35%. So why is why are our results so good? Because our current assessment of clinical outcome, including patient reported outcome, laxity, rotation, and scores, are very much subjective. So how valid are this assessment we're doing? We really have to re-examine how good these assessments are. Now, last year in Osaka, which is uh, 2009, uh, the ISICOF has a uh, biannual meeting, and before that, there was a meeting organized by Professor Kurosaka uh, on ACL surgery, and one session is including five famous surgeons uh, examining a knee under general anesthesia with navigation system and uh, asked the surgeon to perform two maneuvers, a Lachman. Now, the IKDC, International Knee Documentation Committee Knee System, has been a gold standard for comparing, uh, you know, uh, our um, ACL, you know, knees for a while. Uh, it was established in the 80s uh, by very well-known surgeons. But one of the interesting criteria they do is they combine normal and near normal as one group for assessment. And if you look at this particular table, uh, we actually look at Dr. Wood's article in HSM and reanalyze. Re in terms of basic science, again, there are many studies that find no differences between many tests. And if you look at all this, um, you know, basic science, um, cadaver study, navigation study, they're only applying 5 to 10% of maximum low that uh, we uh, we experience every day, uh, you know, from uh, our um, activities. So all this study, Ferrate, Steiner, Markov show no difference between single and double bundle using quite low, you know, uh, load. Now these are some machines that are being used in Pittsburgh and UCLA uh, and other places. They are very, you know, elaborate. I, uh, in Pittsburgh, we are working with Dr. Hoshino from Kobe, and we try to now uh, establish a level of evidence for basic science. Is the study in vitro or in vivo? Is the study static or dynamic? How much force we have used? Is it human or animal? And from that, we can then... We need to strive for better outcome evaluation. Unless you do that, we will not be able to make improvement uh, in our knee surgery, especially ACL reconstruction. And we are making headway uh, in Pittsburgh. Uh, Dr. Tashman, uh, who, who is a pioneer in um, using biplane X-ray technique to look at uh, human kinematics, I have this system uh, established in Pittsburgh, and he can, using a subject running in this um, biplane X-ray can measure uh, kinematics uh, within 0.1 millimeters per one degree of accuracy. If you coded it with a 3D CAT scan, you can actually. And this, um, you know, um, graph from this kind of uh, studies, 
uh, interestingly, these are uh, almost 60 subjects that uh, have transtibial atrial construction done. Uh, and you can see on the CAT scan, they are quite anatomical. However, these people are completely asymptomatic. Also, when you put the A cell anatomically, you start to also change the contact stress pattern and pressure between the thermal condyle and the tibial plateau. So, and also the petrothermal joint too. In other words, if you change the anatomically attachment of the A cell, you change the kinematics, you, you change the contact stress in the whole knee. Now recently, we were able to study some anatomical single and double bundle reconstruction. And for the first time, we were able to uh, have the red operated side uh, coming much closer to the normal blue side, as you can uh, see right here. Uh, we have done about 10 patients so far, but we have a National Institute of Health Freeman Dollar Grant. Uh, we can study 150 patients in the next uh, two, three years and uh, look at single double bundle between 14 to 18 meters in insertion size size compared, comparing in a prospective randomized study using quadricep tendons. So hopefully we can give you some answer at the end of this, uh, you know, three, five years, um, you know, intensive study of these people. A cell is not a simple structure. It's complicated. It's two bundle with specific attachment site. The A cell is also, you know, serves the bungling pathology and affected by that. In other words, there's some morphology of the bone or the knee that will uh, require more rotation and maybe require more work for the A cell. And some may not even uh, have a chance of uh, giving out because the morphology of the condyle will not allow this so-called giving out phenomenon. The neuromuscular control is also important. Uh, in other words, um, we can uh, turn the A cell if you have good neuromuscular control, maybe it will prevent us from giving out, but may not prevent a normal kinematics. Meniscus tear, control injury is also important, but of course if the patient after surgery decided not to play sports, even if the A cell is done not quite in the right position, maybe nothing bad will happen. So we have to, if you live within your means or your nth level function, you may be okay. So fortunately, there are many factors that protect the surgeon. But that doesn't mean that we should not do the best for the patient uh, when we perform surgery in the first place. And also we need better uh, objective outcome measurement, including images. Uh, you can see on the left side, this is something that Dr. Connie Chu and Prisberg have uh, advocated using the so-called optimal coherence tomography, uh, which is a uh, optic image using infrared uh, to look at. So in conclusion, Finding no differences does not mean there's no differences. We just have to look harder and be more critical of ourselves. So we have to look meticulously to find differences so we can improve. We need more objective outcome measurements, including biological kinematics and imaging. And lastly, the personality of anatomical reconstruction is still need to be defined and discovered because we've just been doing it for the last, you know, maybe three, five years after discovering the exact, um, you know, uh, insertion sites and also changing the technique uh, how to place a tunnel in the proper position.